Today we're looking at a new microphone from Movo, the Movo Double Mic, and we are going to decide whether or not we think that it is a good option, how does it sound. Before we get started, let's talk about my relationship with Movo. The first Movo microphone I ever reviewed was the Movo VXR10, and that microphone I bought completely on my own, and I have really enjoyed that microphone. Movo did send me out this microphone to review, but there was no communication of talking points. I will be giving my honest and unbiased opinions on this microphone. There are so many microphones within this space of DSLR and mirrorless and cell phone microphones. So what does this add to the market that other microphones haven't? First of all, this microphone is dual capsule, which means that it has a microphone pointing in both directions, both forward and back. There are two ways that you can use this to your advantage. One is if you're doing sort of a vlogging interview thing where you're talking to someone, you're behind the camera, they're in front of it, then it captures the audio from both both of you. Now, unfortunately, it does not split the audio into two channels. I wish that it did that, that way you could isolate one from the other in post-production, but I also understand why they did it, because that would have just made the whole experience a lot more complicated, and this microphone is built to help you streamline your process, not to make it more complicated. The other thing that you can do is like if you're doing a video with two people, say on opposite sides of a table, you could put one microphone between them instead of wiring up two microphones into one camera or into an audio recorder, and it would capture the audio from both directions a lot better than if you just had the microphone that was on top of the camera. The back microphone is a lower sensitivity than the front microphone, which means since you're going to be closer to it, the person holding the camera is going to be closer to the microphone, it is a super cardioid puller pattern, which allows you to get less audio from the side. Here I have a light with a fan in it, but this microphone is not picking up much of that fan noise at all because it is a super cardioid, meaning it picks up from the front and less from the sides and only a little bit from the rear. It's also not only compatible with your DSLR, but you can just, with the flip of a switch, plug it right into a cell phone's headphone jack and use it to capture audio on your cell phone. Say you're starting your YouTube channel or vlogging or whatever you're doing with a cell phone, you could buy this microphone, use it for years. When you upgrade to a DSLR camera, you can just flip a switch and plug it into your new camera. And when you are using it with your phone, it actually has a headphone jack. So you can listen to playback with third-party apps using this microphone. So you don't have to unplug this microphone in order to listen to your audio. You could just plug it into the headphone jack that's on the microphone. In the box, you have the microphone, the shark mount, of course, and you also get foam and furry windscreens. Now, I will caveat, comparing this to the VXR10 or the Rode Video Micro's big, huge wind muff, these do not work very well. I mean, you can hear in this audio the furry ones because the other ones don't really do anything wind itself. I'm wondering how well it's actually working because it's pretty windy and some of the other reviewers I saw said that the wind muffs didn't work. Man, it has been actual months since I took my skateboard out. you're getting way more wind noise than you would with the video micro or the VXR10. Now what is it like to actually use this microphone because I was still a bit skeptical. I mean, I like the idea of being able to capture audio from the front and the back, but what were the upsides and the downsides of actually using the microphone? Well, for me, one of the downsides is for some reason, I don't know if it's just my camera or if it's something else, but this microphone is not compatible with my M50. It just gives this weird that. And I tried it on my GH5, on my wife's phone. It worked fine with those, but I was convinced, no, this, because every other microphone I've tried on my M50 has worked flawlessly and still works flawlessly, I was convinced that this had to be a defective model. And Movo actually was good enough to send me out a second microphone to try, and it still did it. So I don't know if it's just an incompatibility between the M50 and this microphone or my M50 and this microphone. So that's a big knock for it. In my case, again, if you have an M50 and this microphone, I would love to know if it has done the same for you. I like the way that the microphone sounds. It's very comparable to the VXR10, the Rode Video Micro. Because of the video style I normally do, I didn't find the dual capsule nature of it 
that useful. You know, I like the concept of these like little library things. I mean, I don't use them, but the concept is really cool. It's got the quarter 20 thread on the bottom of it, so I can boom it like I am right now. If you do a lot of the vlogging style where you're behind the camera talking to someone, this microphone is an excellent option. I would definitely recommend it. If you're not doing something where you're going to need that dual capsule nature, I just stick with the Rode Video Micro or VXR10. I prefer the VXR10 personally, but I would pick one of those microphones over this one, again, unless you are actually going to use the dual capsule feature. That's going to be it for this video. Just a short review on a good budget microphone. I have several videos coming up in the future, including I'm trying to make a rig where I have an entire 4K studio kit in one bag. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a really cool video. So I've been completely out of it most of 2021. It has been a crazy year for me. 2021 has felt more like my 2020. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video. By the way, is vlogging even a thing anymore? Because I haven't watched a vlog in like probably six months.